Hi, I'm Gary Fetter, and today we're going to talk about measuring supply chain performance. When we talk about that, one of the things that's important are what we call KPIs, or Key Performance Indicators. And today we're going to talk about the three, three of the most widely used KPIs that are related to inventory. The inventory turnover, or what we also call inventory turns, the inventory days of supply, and the uh, fill rate. So first, when we're dealing with inventory turnover or inventory turns, that's nothing more than the number of times that a company's inventory cycles or turns each year. And as you can see, the inventory turns is equal to nothing more than our cost of goods sold, okay, or COGS, divided by our average aggregate value of inventory. Okay, what we can call AAVI. Now our average aggregate value of inventory is nothing more than the summation of our average inventory for each I, for each item that we'll come back to, times its unit value. Okay, and um, this I is that we need to, what we're talking about here is we need to sum this across all items where I are things like our raw materials inventory, our work in process inventory, and our finished goods inventory. Okay, So we're summing that over all of those different types of inventory. And our COGS, the cost of goods sold, which is not surprising, you probably remember, it is only deals with, or it's only for, our finished goods. Okay. And importantly, it's valued at our cost, not at the sale price. And when we calculate this, the value that we get, a poor or a low inventory turnover value, indicates that a large amount of inventory is required to satisfy our demand for that period, for that year. Okay, We're going to take a look at an example here in just a second. Uh, but the second KPI that we talked about was our days or our weeks of supply. And that's a measure of how many days or weeks our inventory is available. And the days of supply is equal to our average aggregate value of inventory, just like we calculated on the previous slide, divided by our cost of goods sold, divided by 365 days. And of course, if we were interested in weeks, we would just use the number of weeks. Okay. The fill rate was our third one. The fill rate is nothing more than the fraction or the percentage of orders filled by a distribution center or our intermediate supply points within a specific time period, which typically uh, we deal with um, day. And here, high fill rates indicate that the inventory is moving from the supplier to the customer and reducing inventory at our distribution center at a fast rate. So if we have a high fill rate, 97% um, might be considered high in most industries. Um, that would lead us to believe, or would indicate rather, that we have um, supplies, that our inventory is moving from the suppliers to the customers at a really fast rate. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here's a KPI example, and we have the Slick Rock Bicycle Company, which manufactures mountain bikes. Last year, their cost of goods sold was $4.3 million, and the management team needs to know the number of inventory turns and the days of supply being held in inventory. And so the following average values listed here were provided by our accounting department. So we can see that we have our production and materials 
parts, okay, which is really our raw materials. So our raw materials average value, 263,800. Our work in process and our finished goods are all listed here. And if we added them up, we would see that our average aggregate value of inventory or the raw materials plus the work in process, the average value of the work in process, plus the average value of our finished goods is equal to $561,800. So now we can begin. We have all the information we need. It's first asking us to calculate the number of inventory turns. And so we said before, recall that that's nothing more than the cost of goods sold divided by our average aggregate value of inventory. And so in this case, our cost of goods sold was 4.3 million. So I'll just write that out. And we just need to divide that by our 561,800. And if you enter that into your calculator, um, we would find that that should equal about 7.65 turns. Okay. And the second thing that it asks for is for us to calculate the days of supply. And to do that, recall that that was equal to our average aggregate value of inventory divided by our cost of goods sold divided by, in this case, it's asking us for days. So we're going to use 365. So we're going to divide the cost of goods sold by 365. And when we use the information that we have from the accounting department, we would divide, take 561,800, and we would divide that by our cost of goods sold which was 4.3 million, and we would divide that by 365. And if we did the math on that in our calculator, we would find that that's going to equal 47.69, or approximately 48 days. So we have 48 days of inventory, in, or of supply in our inventory. So to sum up, we just talked about three of the most widely used KPIs that deal with inventory. And it's, importantly, it's, it's important to effectively manage your inventory because, as you know, carrying higher than necessary inventories can be very costly and decrease your competitiveness. So that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and that it was beneficial and helpful and hope that you have a good day. Thank you.